that field, everyone has one. And if you live with other people, you've got, you know, this uh, soup, a, a kind of a culture, this field of stuff floating around that we're all bumping into each other's field and these issues in our field. And they sync up or they fight with each other. When one of us changes that uh, soup, our culture, it's like putting one drop of vinegar in milk. The whole soup is changed. It has to be. Hi, I'm Liz Larson. And I'm Bill McKenna. And together, we created the Cogno Movement System. And we'd like to welcome you to the New Life Perspectives radio show. Where we're going to be sharing with you tools, tips, and ideas that are going to change your life. Hello, hello in UK Health Radio Land. I'm Liz Larson and I'm here with my friend. Bill McKenna. Hey, Bill McKenna. And we are the hosts of the New Life Perspectives radio show and the team that created the Cogno Movement System. And today is our dun 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 100th episode. Can you believe it, Bill? Fireworks, fireworks. Oh my gosh, 100 episodes. Did you ever think that we would have 100 episodes? Well, I mean, who would think you and I would have that much to talk about? Of course, that's rhetorical. <laughs> Actually, so we're right at our two-year mark with the UK Health Radio Network, and it sure has been fun. We've had the opportunity to meet the most incredible people, haven't we? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, just so many people that are amazing stories. Jacob Lieberman. An amazing story of a man who who could see without his eyes. And he's an eye doctor. <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. Yeah, I've been Alexander has been on the show. Cynthia Sue Larson's been on the show. And the list goes on and on and on. I mean, uh, we just interviewed Jerry Cantor uh, a couple of weeks ago. And man, for me, that was a huge, huge interview to be able to pick his brain. He's a homeopath, of course. But each and every person that we've had on this show has been amazing, amazing to us. And we've learned so much. So we wanted to have a special show for today, our 100th episode. And we were going to go back to something. Actually, we talked to Cynthia Sue Larson about in maybe our third or fourth episode. And that's reality shifting. But I'll tell you, Bill and I know so much more about it now, just maybe two years later because we have experienced some incredible stuff. I mean, some incredible stuff. So what we wanted to pose the question to you is, can you actually shift reality? We say the answer is not only yes, but hell yes. And what are some ways, practical, quantum, and perspective, those are the three we'll talk about today, that you can do this for real, in your life and we'll share some amazing amazing stories yeah so i mean everybody listening to this around the globe and you're saying shifting reality and and you know maybe if we could just define it for you a little bit because this is a real mind blower you know i think if we backed up many many years we we would have uh said what are you talking about uh that something is there and then it's not how could that possibly be? You know, uh, either an entire building or a sign or something uh, that uh, repairs itself, like a car. You know, the power steering is not working and then it is working. I mean, stuff that just shouldn't be possible. Even medical stuff that is like, oh, that's, you know, there's only a one, it's degenerative and it only goes in one direction. All of these things can actually, in our experience, I know this is going to sound nuts, but can actually be shifted. Reality can shift 
and it does. And as it turns out, there is a formula to get it to shift. It's not like, you know, in the olden days, well, you know, that was the gifted seer in the group or the gifted person and things just, the laws of physics don't seem to really hold true in the presence of this saint. But we understand better how it all works now and we'll be sharing with you today some real life stories and some insights about what keeps reality fixed and what makes it so that it becomes malleable. Yeah, I think this is a really good point. And the point that if any, if ever, I'm going to use a Bill McKenna, if you only walk away with one thing today, it's this, that now we know anybody can do it. Anybody can do it if you know how and it's not the weird stuff it's not sitting around meditating you know it isn't uh taking magic mushrooms or ayahuasca it's uh some very simple things so what do we really mean by reality shifting we mean stuff like one minute you have a mortal enemy in your life, the person that you've hated the most for years or that you have had the biggest problem with in your life. And then five minutes later, you and that person are very, very close. It's not only close, but your relationship has flourished into friendship and love and traveling together. We've seen that a lot of times. Children who could not speak who are now communicating fully reality shifts. Bill and I personally, we've told, told a story. We changed the rules of a major corporation to fit what we wanted, what our reality would be. And I'll, I'll tell you this, but when I was a kid or even 10 years ago, I really could only have, have dreamt of this. And now when things aren't going the way I want or like, I know how to shift it. So let's start with the first one. The first kind of uh, reality shift is shifting your perspective. Would you share with everybody just a little bit about that, Bill? So this one is um, uh, a fairly simple one, and but very, very important. Now, um, one way that reality actually becomes locked into position is by you having a fixed position relative to it. We end up keeping reality stuck in place. I know this kind of sounds a little bit nutty, but it actually turns out to be true. You know, the, the old mystics, uh, Hermes Trismegistus, the Hermetic teachings, uh, basically they said that all the world is mental. They knew way back when that we actually create reality. And we collapse reality into a particular situation. I, for example, see this person as, let's say, a jerk or wonderful and there it is and that is reality and that is the reality that i experience that particular perspective and and then reality will bend around my perspective now this is based in science turns out at the quantum level that um, there is a, a malleability. Uh, there's been at MIT, at uh, uh, also in Vienna, there's these quantum experiments that were done where they would, they would fire a photon through uh, two slits. They would just basically fire the, the photons through slits. And when there was no observer, 
what would happen is the photons would act as if they were a wave. And when there was an observer, reality would collapse into a particle, a specific. So it goes from all possibilities to one. And it was based upon if there was an observer or not. So much so that even when, let's say, in between the time that, let's say, there is no observer and the photon is fired, and halfway through the period uh, for it to get against the wall where, where it, it would reach its end point, they would turn on the camera. And instantly, it would actually become a particle. So that means it went back in time. And, and it acted when it got fired as a, as a particle. And the same thing in reverse. It goes actually beyond time. So when, when we humans observe a reality, especially with any sort of feeling around it, we can lock in a position. Now, when, when our perspective changes, the reality also changes. And Liz has you know, basically daily stories about this. Liz, uh, you know, in relationship, tell us, tell everybody about some of those wonderful stories about when you've actually seen this happen, that the person actually changes their perspective. And then what happened with the other person? Well, before we do that, Bill, I, I want to bring it out of the scientific world and into just stuff that we've all seen. So do you guys remember back in the day on the internet, the black and gold dress? There was this dress that went around, it was black and gold stripes, or it was white and blue, depending on who looked at it. Nobody could figure this out. It was a huge <laughs> enigma, but the dress was either black and gold or white and blue, depending on, on the viewer. So that's a reality shift. In one reality, depending on who's looking, exactly what Bill was just saying, it's black and gold. In another reality, it's blue and white. But there's a really big reason for this. You can only see what your neurology lets, lets you see, what you're a match to from the past. So um, I'll share a story. One of them, I, we've shared it again and again, but it, it's worth sharing. A woman who really believed her mom was evil, like five minutes into a session, she was like, oh no, wait a minute, I'm my mom's favorite. And now they get along great. But it changed in that momentary time and at a distance. The mom at the same time sent a text and hey, I think you're great, <laughs> you know, from hundreds and hundreds of miles away. So when you're able to shift the opinion that your body holds, is this a threat or is it not a threat? All of a sudden, reality becomes different and you see the world an absolutely new way. So the body will react. I see that person. I think she's a jerk. We're not getting along well because my body's telling me that I got a gut feeling about this. And it sends the information from my, to my brain to interpret. Now my brain believes this is, this is the truth. This is my reality. The minute that wave collapses in the body, the world change, the colors look different. It's blue and gold, not not white and blue, you know? The storyline is different. No, no, we've always gotten along well. You know, we've always uh, seen each other in this way. And, but if you'd rewound time, that wasn't true just five minutes before. Everything looks different. One of the things that um, happened for us, I'll, I'll tell this story, we, um, wanted a particular kind of a media event and it just wasn't working. And actually the rules were that we couldn't be on that media event because we'd been on it a year before. Well, that wasn't going to work for us. It, in our time frame, we needed to be on that media event sooner than later. So what did we do? We used the Cogno Movement System, Bill, Leah, and I, because it's an expert at changing your perspective. 
and we changed how we felt. So before we felt like, man, we need this thing. And man, it really sucks that it's not working out. Well, we just worked a little bit to change what part of the brain was handling this information. What was it matching in before that we just hadn't been able to get to what we wanted, but it didn't happen? What did it match in our systems from our lives in the past? And we collapsed and erased all of that to the point where it was like, well, okay, however it works out, it will. And within minutes, I, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, maybe five minutes. I mean, it was a short time. We got an email saying, okay, roles are changed. We'd like you to come now in six months. Well, six months didn't work for us either. <laughs> we wanted it to be right away, right? Six months, then the, then the thing wouldn't air for a year. So we worked it again. So what did we work? We worked that feeling in our bodies that matched Again, when we didn't get what we wanted, when you know it didn't work out for us in the past, we had a perspective of that. We knew that feeling, man, it doesn't work out for us. It's not cool, right? Yeah. We worked it out until none of us felt that way. We just felt neutral again. And reality shifted one more time. Well, we got an email or a phone call, I don't remember now, saying, hey, would you come in six weeks? Now that fit for us, <laughs> completely changed. Now, was it our perspective or was it a quantum shift? I would say it's both, but in the next segment, let's talk about what does that mean when it's a quantum shift, when it's spooky action at a distance. I think that story fit into spooky action at a distance, but let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back. Right now, we need to hear from the UK Health Radio. UK Health, take it away. Okay, and we're back. We're talking about reality shifts, and we want to really get into the meat of some really cool reality shifting stories and spooky action at a distance. One of them was at an event uh, recently, last September, one of our attendees had had a business that was on the market for about 10 years and it just had not had any kind of a viable offer. Well, there were a lot of things connected to it, you know, property issues, a parent that was also involved where if a really great offer had come in, it might've caused bigger problems. Even though this attendee wanted that property to sell really badly, she wanted to start a new life there was stuff like if it happened. So we're in this session in cognitive movement sessions. We do exactly what I said. We seem to clear out anything that is a match to that old feeling in the past. Remember that we can only perceive that which we have a match to what, how our nervous systems are informed from the past for her. There'd been times when things shifted and it just didn't work out well. And that's what her, where her system was living. So in terms of reality shift, she was in her past, right? So we do the session, she gets to neutral, meaning she just doesn't feel that way about it anymore. It's like, okay, I guess this thing could sell. And she got an email in that moment with an offer. Now Isn't, that's some spooky action at a distance. It, so, so everybody listening, Everybody listening, listen to this. I mean, we're talking about an email coming in right as the work is going on. It's amazing. And now that, you know, that big deal, right, which is a multi-million dollar deal, done, done. It wasn't the first time, right, Bill? Remember the gal, there was a person in Australia. Remember the building that was on the market for 10 years and then also the house, the there income a, property. Yeah, exactly. It was a huge piece of property that was multiple, um, multiple uh, parts of it. There was one massive blank lot and, uh, and then also a piece of property too. And the entire thing, not one offer, not one. In that particular case, I think it was over a decade. I think it was 12 years. You can imagine having a piece of property on the market for 12 years 
without an offer. And literally, literally, it was the next day. The next day, the offer offer happened. It shows how powerful we are at holding things in place and people in place. Our reality can only be seen through our lens. So my reality, even though Bill and I are sitting on a Zoom call together, you know, recording this episode, is completely different than Bill's reality. We think we're sharing one. We're agreeing on the fact that, you know, it's this time and this date and we're on Zoom. But other than that, our realities are particularly seen through our perspective, what we know, what we see. So it's quite easy to change what we know and we see when we know we only have to change ourselves. This is the big trick, you guys. You change you and the reality changes. So with this person, there was another part of the story. There was something more that she wanted as well, right? Do you remember it? It was about uh, rental property, renting out her property or income. Oh, 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 yeah. The, wanting to rent out part of uh, this property as well, another piece of property, and wanting to create some income. And and this was all part of the same uh, session. One of them was selling off the uh, huge portion. And then the other was renting uh, a uh, another part of the property that um, uh, that was the residence. And sure enough, it was only a couple days and it was like out of the blue getting approached. It's not even on the market. It wasn't anything, you know, it was, it was just like somebody, somebody knew somebody and they said, Hey, I got a person that needs a place. And I know you've got that, that, uh, that, unit in your back is would you be willing i know that you got stuff in it but would you be willing oh my gosh just like that that was part of the story the other part was a horse property she had there was two the unit in the back and then the horse property so this is part of that perspective and quantum shift because it had never occurred to her to her in her life to do such a thing to rent those pieces out and right after her session somebody approaches right? Hey, I see you've got property. Would you be willing to rent it for a horse? Never occurred to her. Big perspective shift. You know what it's like, guys? It's like having the blinders taken off, right? It's like, you know how horses will have those, um, the blinders on the side so they can only see straight ahead. That's what happens to us. Our nervous system is the functional part of the body that does this, holds us in place, and we hold reality in place through it. We really do. And we hold yeah. people in place as well. Well, you know, the key, just a key here for everybody, what what Liz is saying is actually true. And, and case in point, we had a, we have a practitioner whose daughter has a, a developmental issue. And this uh, particular daughter is, uh, I believe, around the 10-year-old mark, right about there. Uh, and and um, what uh, she had always, like, um, you know, taken her the contents of her diaper and wiped the walls and anything else with it. You know, I creative artwork. You know, and this has been an ongoing thing for a decade. Anyway, you would think that, well, there is no solution, right? Every possible thing to try to stop this. You can imagine what it would be like living in the house for a decade, trying to clean up daily. And, you know, every possible thing that you could do to make sure, you know, that that didn't happen, but it did for a decade. So here's the beauty of it. Liz said, hey, you know what? Why don't you use the principle of the quantum and work this out inside of you? And so she did. 
she did her cognitive movement session on how she felt about it. And she ended up uncovering some amazing things that were, you would think were unrelated. The history of her working on a farm and, and having to end up being the one who during, as of being on a farm, the slaughtering of animals, and she would be in charge of the entrails, you know, moving those. And, and so, you know, all that things with fecal matter are related to that. Well, anyway, uh, fast forward, you know, 40, 50 years, and here we are. She's dealing with fecal matter all again, everywhere, all day. Well, amazing, amazing. She ends up clearing this out, neutralizing all of those kind of experiences and the trauma of having to deal with this on a, on a decade, you know, for a decade, you know, here as an adult, and you're not gonna believe it. It stopped. It stopped. The child now for several months, not once, not once, no more interest in that. Zero interest. It, it's so fascinating, Bill, because really what you're describing in that story to, to witness was incredible, is what's familiar is what your nervous system keeps looking for. She had no idea that her mind and body were just playing out something that she disliked from the past that was so familiar. It really is that simple. Our nervous systems will try to match what it already knows, things that are comfortable, but also things that are uncomfortable. In keeping us safe around it or trying to, it actually sends a signal out to anything and everything around us. And that will find its match equal to that. So it was about poop and cleaning up poop and she hated that. And then there were other stories that had to do with it in her teenage life. And, and, and then, you know, here comes this child and, and that's, that's the story. You know, it's an I always and I never story. So that wasn't the only one. She discovered that she, um, her daughter had epilepsy and she was also experiencing anxiety. So she noticed that when she would have anxiety, the child would have an epileptic seizure. So she took this principle and worked her own anxiety. And the child has not had an epileptic seizure since months and months. Like, this seems like miracle stuff, and it is, but what she discovered and will never be able to unsee, when she changed the pattern in herself, she stopped holding her child in that orbit. Now, was it her fault? No, it's not your fault, but it's your experience. It's what your reality is through your experience and through your perspective. So it's perspective and quantum, because how did that change her child? Especially the, the, the poop thing, you know, that's incredible. But we see stories like that, that we could go on for years about. We have a, a practitioner amongst our ranks. In fact, this is more common, the story of our practitioners than not. But this one in particular came to us with needing surgeries <laughs> in a job she hated, living somewhere she did not like, um, just in a, 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 not a great state, you know, depressed using medicine that she didn't want to be using and also other things, other kind of drugs she didn't want to be using. And she came to one of our cognitive conscious events, and this is unusual for a person straight out the gate, but she did that. And then she got right into practitioner program and it, from November to February, her life changed radically. She no longer needed surgery. She got out of corporate and started her own gig. She moved from Colorado to Maine. There wasn't a thing in her life that looked the same, except for maybe her cats. But her perspective had shifted so radically that she could no longer hold everything in the place it was before. She could only see this new reality. And that happens for her you know, day after day after day, because she learned the trick. I changed me and my experience of this life changes. It's really um, it's very simplistic, 
<laughs> in a way, but super magical, don't you think? You know, it really is. I guess what, what you know, decades ago, I didn't understand is I thought the only effect, right, was what I would physically affect, right? If I pick up this coffee cup, I'm picking up a coffee cup right now and lifting it up, yes, I'm affecting reality. And this is one level of reality, literal, physically uh, picking stuff up, pushing a pen against paper, clicking a tab on, a, on the computer, you know, all of those different things are your the way we're taught from an early age. But there is this other thing, which is extremely powerful, and it almost seems like magic, but it's not. It's just not completely understood by the masses about these quantum reality shifts. Turns out that this is very, very real, and you can literally feel some of it in the field around you. So what do I mean by that? There is a bio field that's around you. This is now scientifically proved. It's electromagnetic, and it's chemical and hormonal. hormonal. And it contains all of those things. You know how they say a dog could smell fear? Well, actually, they're not lying. A dog can smell fear. There are certain chemicals that we emit when we're afraid, right? And they can smell those things. Now, there's also this other electromagnetic signal that is right around you. And, and if you have had, a, let's say, a traumatic event in your life, something that went horribly wrong, and you're in, you, you, you really had a hard time in your life, it turns out that that is most likely actually still there in the field. And if you were to think about, you know what, if that was somewhere in the field around me, where would it be? Where would it be if it was somewhere? If you opened your hand and you reached out and came underneath it very, very slowly and paid attention to your hand, you're going to feel like a heaviness right there. It has a density. It has a dimension. Uh, and you know, a left, a right, a top, a back. You can actually feel it. It feels kind of like thick air or sometimes electric, or sometimes hot, or sometimes cold, but it's very, very real. My point of, of pointing this out is that the mother that we talked about that was cleaning up the poo all the time, there was one of those things in her field, and, that, and the kid was attached to it as well. And when all of this went away, that little cloud, literally, if you reach, would have reached out, it's like dissipated and went right away, poof like a poof, it went away. And so too, this spooky action at a distance, holding in with one particle spinning and the other particle spinning sympathetically to it. When we change one particle, it changes the other at the quantum level. So I know we gotta take a break. Uh, UK Health Radio, Take it away. We're going to be right back with more exciting reality shifting in a second. We got a lot of good stories. So we're back and we're talking about real reality shifting. And Bill was talking about that our bodies actually emit uh, signals, electromagnetic, hormonal, and they are have a mass in our field. We've talked about this many times that that is measurable and you can learn to feel it. We have a program um, called, um, uh, yeah, Cogno what is it Quantum. called? Cogno Quantum. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> Cogno Movement is what we do. Cogno Quantum is the name of that where we teach how to do it. It's, it's actually quite simple. But that field, everyone has one. And if you live with other people, you've got, you know, this uh, soup 
a, a kind of a culture, this field of stuff floating around that we're all bumping into each other's field and these issues in our field. And they sync up or they fight with each other. When one of us changes that uh, soup, our culture, it's like putting one drop of vinegar in milk. The whole soup is changed. It has to be. The whole thing doesn't work the same way. And it is, we've seen it a million times that this can happen at 3,000 miles away, or it can happen right next to you, someone sitting right next to you. It doesn't matter where they are in distance. It's because we're all contributing to the field. Lynn McTaggart wrote the book, The Field, which explains all of this. We're all contributing to this experience, but we can only see it through our set of eyes. So we really have the ability to change almost anything, including time. We've spent some time, haven't we, Bill McKenna? Yeah, this is a really a strange one, right? That time itself. You know, um, I used to think that, you know, that time was non-malleable, non-negotiable. There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and that's it. If you drive 60 miles an hour, you will go 60 miles. And in one reality, this is actually true. But there is a method that you can exit that reality and all of a sudden the rules no longer apply. I know, I know you're listening, and you're like, wait a second, what are you saying? What is that? Well, it turns out that this thing we call time is not just going in one direction. It can go in an opposite direction. This is all scientifically uh, provable too. You can look up information on time going backwards at the South Pole and, and also about uh, time that taking a, a jet that they went back in the 70s or 60s, they took a jet and continuously flew it around the world. And they had a they had a clock inside, and they I believe they th they flew counter rotation to the Earth, and they lost time. They lost time. Well, right? I mean, that's all know? well and good, Bill McKenna, but tell us how people tell us some stories about it happening practically. Not how because we don't necessarily have time for that, but. Share some of our real life stories of bending time. Okay. Wow. You know, uh, the real life stories of bending time, you know, I'll start with the original story of bending time. And this one for me, uh, I had, uh, I had this one teacher that was teaching me about dimensions and they taught me about the principles, uh, that were um, made up dimensions. And in the third dimension, you know, that time is linear. And uh, in the fourth dimension, uh, time became malleable. And in the fifth dimension, all time was one, as if you died. But everything is happening now. You may have heard near-death experience stories. So, so I knew about the, the properties of the fourth dimension, and I, um, uh, but I didn't ever relate it to bending time. It was simply just a thought that occurred to me while being incredibly late one day. I used to make a trip. It was an hour and 45 minute trip every Saturday. And I set the cruise control at the speed limit because uh, um, I know all about getting tickets. And so I learned my lesson and I only use my cruise control and that way I don't get tickets. So I set the cruise control and hour 45 minutes later, I'm at my destination. So I'd been doing this for several years by this point. And this, in this particular day, it was, a, it was a, as we say, lemony snickets, you know, a series of unfortunate events that led to me being, you know, I think it was something like 40 minutes late. Uh, and as I get on the freeway, I'm 40 minutes late. 
And um, what happened is I started to recognize, oh my gosh, well, I'm in fear. And fear is part of the third dimension. And if I stay in fear, then I will remain, uh, you know, I'm going to be 40 minutes late. So I ended up doing these other things that are the fourth dimension, you know, changing my feeling. And I set myself, oh, I'll be there at 10 minutes early. I know that sounds crazy, right? I'm 40 minutes late and I'm saying I'm supposed to be there at 10 o'clock. And, and I'm saying, oh, I'll be there 10 minutes to 10. And uh, anyway, I just did that. I did this religiously for that, uh, that period of time. I, I remember not looking at the clock because uh, the clock is like a, uh, it's a feature of the third dimension, right? It's a rule, right? There's a rule. The clock is a rule. And anyway, I, I turned on the blinker and I looked down at the clock when I turned the blinker on to pull in the driveway, 10 minutes to the 10. I was like, what? oh, I, I was so freaked out because I, you know, it's kind of like so shocking the first time you've been time like, you know, where did that 40 minutes, where did 40 minutes late go? You know, it was, um, it, it, it was very kind of, um, I don't know how to describe it other than it, it, it's a little bit shocking the first time you do it. And this is that thing, you know, it's happened to a lot of people spontaneously. I know many of you out there being like, yeah, I did that one time, but I don't know how I did it. But Many of us do it again and again now because we know we just change our perspective. We change the signal our body's sending out. So we learn to drop down into what we call neutral. Just, you know, you're going to get there at that time. You set out the signal in your mind. And that's the truth of it from then until you arrive. And we've, you know, whole bus loads of people, you know, van loads of people arrived once in Sicily to a ferry a half an hour early when we were going to literally be a half an hour late. So we shifted time by an hour and, and it was 10 people in a van that witnessed it. You know, um, uh, the stories are just again and again and again, but it's about dropping down and ignoring the perspective you used to have that it's going to take this length of time to get from here to there. And if I don't get from here to there in that length of time, I'm late. The perspective yeah. changes to, well, you know what? Here's the time I choose to arrive and that's when I'll get there. You know, I remember years ago, a man told me a story about arriving at an, a trip that took 10 hours and he arrived in four, but has no idea how it happened. And you hear this again and again and again. If you knew how to do it on purpose, man, that would save you a lot of time. The thing is, you can't be in that state that Bill's talking about a fear that you might be late or you can't do it. You, again, have to learn how to drop down physically into neutral so that your brain does not get the signal to worry, to hold time in place. That's really all it is. We can manipulate how, the way our brain sees the world, our experience through changing the physical body. So everybody in UK Health Radio Land, we are just about against the time to be done with this show. We only have a limited time on UK Health Radio, but UK Health Radio has made it available for you to listen to an extended version of this show anywhere that you like to listen to your podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Play. Just look up hashtag wellbeing podcast. And you'll find the UK Health Radio Show and just look for UK or uh, New Life Perspectives Radio and you can watch this. If you watch us on YouTube, that is through the Cogno Movement channel, you can often see the extended version and sometimes a sneak peek of the next week's show. So I want to close this episode here on the UK Health Radio by saying reality shifts are real and you can do it. The most simple way that you can do it is to choose something else in your life. You know, even if you don't know how to get yourself to new, neutral, even if you don't know how to bend time, you can simply notice what's happening in your life right now. Take a look around. What is not working? And simply make one different choice. Our lives are built on patterns. 
We see what we expect to see. We see what we've felt in the past. We know what we think we know until everything radically changes. The way that it can radically change is by simply noticing how it's the same now and turning your butt around and doing something exactly opposite. <laughs> you know, if you normally turn right on the way to work, turn left. You know, if you normally say good morning on the way into the office, say, uh, good day, how you doing, right? Simply start to notice where you are doing the same thing and do something else. It's about choosing. That's the really most simple way to start. Now, cognitive movement and learning how to radically change the signal in your body that goes to your brain, that's a way to change reality whenever you damn well please. <laughs> so we highly recommend that one, but Bill and I are a little biased. But you know, if you're if you want to do something right this second, choose something different. And it doesn't have to be something giant. It can be the tiniest things that you change that help you have a new experience. New experiences open up the world and show us that there's more. That's why I always recommend taking kids to another country because then they see what the world is not about and what it is. All right, you guys, we've bumped up against the time here for UK Health Radio. We will see you anywhere that you like to listen to your podcast. Thanks for being here, Bill McKenna, and happy 100th birthday. Yay! All right, everybody, UK Health Radio Land, be safe and be well, and we will see you on the flip side. So we're, we're talking about reality shifting in this extended um, version of our 100th episode. And, you know, Bill and I have experienced so much of this ourselves and so much of it from um, around the cognitive movement world that it almost has become normal, just normal. And we'll, in this part, we'll tell some more fun stories. And this is an oldie, but a goodie. Bill was leading one of the seminars that was one that I wasn't at, I think, for some reason. And uh, the lady, there was a lady there who had a son who was, uh, you know, failure to launch kind of a son, Liv was still living at home. Do you remember this one? Oh. And he had the filthy room and he and his mother were fighting all the time. Oh my gosh. This is a really funny one. You know, so uh, uh, she came in because she was so darn mad, you know, uh, he was, uh, she had a situation where he moved back in the house yeah, after being gone. And now he was like, I don't know if anybody ever saw that movie, um, Wedding Crashers. And, you know, Will Ferrell, mom, where's the meatloaf? You know, he was, he, he was one of those, you know, and he would not clean his room like a teenager. And, and his room was a screaming mess. And she was like, he, I can't, he won't let me in the door and he won't let me clean it. And the place is a mess. And uh, anyway, so we just basically had her to do a session on that you know, her, her feeling of uh, being upset at him. And uh, we finished the session and she was like, oh, you know, it's completely, I don't feel anything about it now. And uh, the, literally we walked out the door and, she, and the phone rang and she said, oh, this is my son, I gotta take it. Walks outside and then she comes back in and she says, you ain't gonna believe this. He just called me to say that, Mom, I just called because I know you're I know you're gone and all the stuff, my stuff is out in the hallway. I'm cleaning up and I just didn't want you to be mad when you get home because I'm I'm throwing everything out and I'm cleaning up and that sort of thing, you know. Um, and uh, she was actually in shock. Most interesting thing, though, is that the entire relationship changed. They were ended up going to events together. And these are the type of events that are, you know, personal growth type events. And there it was. She was, uh, you know, she was going to events with him. 
that's incredible, really. I mean, that's a huge shift for him in the kind of person he was and, and what he became. And it's another one of those stories. She changed herself. Right. Another example of her holding him in place. We really want the other person to be the one that's the issue. And, you know, in, in our perspective, they are. But when we change our full perspective of it and our expectation, that's what happens everything shifts it all changes it all changes so let's tell um let's tell some car stories so i have one you know everybody like you know i'll have a reality shift i want myself a bmw a porsche a tesla well we can tell stories of all three so the first one is my story um i like to drive bmws many of you know i was a car dealer for many years i owned car dealerships and the, I could drive anything on the lot that I wanted. And I've driven everything. And there were a few that I liked. But my favorite are BMW because it's nice and solid. You know, if you step on the gas and need to get out of a, a out of a way of a car, you can, you know. I just like them. So I uh, had this BMW. It was getting older, a lot of miles. You know, it needed replaced. But by this time, you know, I was working with Cogno Movement. I didn't own car dealerships anymore. And the last thing on the planet I would want to do is go to a car dealership. Can you imagine? God forbid. I, you know, my husband and, and I had been talking for a little bit, you know, we really need to get another car. So I did my session around it because I was feeling a certain kind of a way about having to go to a dealership. I know, I know the inside of that business, you know, just sounded like no fun whatsoever, but I knew what I wanted. I knew what year I wanted and we were going to buy used when I knew how many miles. So I got myself to neutral and then all of a sudden it just felt like, oh, today's the day. I think we should go look for a car. So my husband takes about three and a half minutes and looks, oh, hey, there's only one in the entire state of Oregon. It's 30 miles away from us. He picks up the phone. He calls. Sure, they have it. We drive over. We look at it. We take a trust drive. It's exactly the price we wanted to pay and no problem. You know, in 20 minutes, we took that car home like that, that fit that fast, the exact car in the right color at the right distance with the right mileage, because I was not holding that as a problem. There was no resistance in my body. We had another one of Bill's clients who wanted a Porsche, but had some real issues, right? Well, gosh. You know, the uh, um, well, I have so many car stories about people. Cars are very emotional for people. And so it's this true. particular, yeah, this particular one, uh, this was a Porsche S4. And it had to be a Porsche S4. Now it's a nice high performance car, not cheap, not cheap. And um, they wanted this for years years i want to manifest a porsche s4 years they've been thinking about it and thinking about it and looking and looking anyway um what's keeping you from it oh i don't i don't know i don't know why i can't manifest it well anyway we begin to work and when we begin to work and the way cognitive movement works is we can tell through a person's neurology where the resistance is and we get them into a certain position and they're like, oh my God, I can't get this, this Porsche because then I would need to uh, move. I actually have to move residents in order to do that. So that's not going to work. Okay. Let's do, let's do a session on, you know, part of the session on, on that. Oh, you know, and then there was another place that that it was like, oh my God, I'm afraid. I'm afraid if 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 I actually get the Porsche S4, all my friends are going to abandon me. They're gonna think that I am some sort of whatever. And they're not gonna like it. And they're gonna leave me. I'm gonna lose my friends. Can you imagine? what kind of resistance you would be, but it wasn't apparent, right? There was only the pure desire for Porsche S4, but underlying it, unbeknownst, there was 
of fear, you know? So all of these things, there was one after the next, after the next, after the next. And we just, we, we cleared out one, two, three, four, until we could tell they were all gone. And guess what happens? The poor Sesh 4 showed up, got a picture of it. You can actually see it on the website. It was such a fun story because because it was it wasn't um, it wasn't readily apparent that uh, that um, the objections, you know, uh, it consciously the person is telling themselves, "I got no objection at all. I want that ride." But there it was. Yeah, it's true. But you do notice when you think about it that you feel some tension around it. There's a little push and pull about it in your body. Well, I want it, but I can't have it. When it's neutral, all the circumstances show up for you to have the thing. Now, it doesn't always poof in your driveway until it does. (laughs) One of our practitioners came home from one of our events in which she'd been working on a Tesla And there's a Tesla with a big red bow in her driveway. Now, this one is funny to me because it reminds me of the stories of the, uh, I think it was the Incan people when the um, Spaniards arrived in Mexico and in South America, they couldn't see the ships because they had no idea, no way to relate to what that was. It took them a while before they could actually physically even see them because they had no reference for them. So when she drives in the driveway, you know, she can kind of see this thing, but she didn't realize it had a big red bow on it. She thought that maybe her son's girlfriend was there. Like it had never even occurred to her that poof, that was her, her Tesla. It was exactly the right pearl white, you know, every detail that she wanted. Well, it turned out her husband had bought it for her unbeknownst to her. And there it was. But it was funny because she shares that she was a little annoyed because that's not exactly the way she wanted it. (laughs) The universe, she made way for the universe to provide it. She forgot to give instructions for how it would arrive. But there it was, poof, in the driveway, she got it. I think that was a funny story because it took her mind a little while to realize, even be able to see the white car with the big red bow. Um, I had said in the earlier part of our show today about um, kids who were who couldn't speak, who are now speaking through typing. And I want to share that story. This is particularly interesting because it's a, it's about changing reality in a, in a general way that paves the path for other people. One of our practitioners is a speech therapist, and she really knew that these kids she was working with, some of them who didn't speak, that there was a lot going on in their minds that they had a lot to say, but there was no proof of it. So she started using cogno movement with them and also on herself around these uh, particular clients that she was working with. And then all of a sudden, several of them could type or they couldn't before. There's a device that allows them to type words and symbols and in individual letters to communicate. And all of a sudden they were silent. Their parents had never heard a thought that they ever had because they didn't speak. And all of a sudden these kids started typing books, (laughs) books where they're so excited to get what's in their mind out. And they're highly, highly intelligent. They're even sarcastic. They wanna know if they can swear. They're very, they're like little philosophers in their mind. So one minute, these clients, they couldn't speak. And and now it's not just a minute. It's been over time. They are fully integrating into the world that's around them, sharing the thoughts that in, are in their mind. So that has actually paved the way for more and more children to do what was po- impossible before, which is now possible. Speaking of possible and impossible, we've done that with some athletes as well. We had an athlete who uh, wanted to be able to jump with both feet. He's a um, basketball player, wanted to be able to jump with both feet. And he was having an issue with both of his feet cooperating and jumping at the same time. So 
we change that, change his perspective, change the perspective of his physical body, and he gained just 12 inches in a jump. Now, somebody else swears it's 18, but I'm going to go with 12. It was, I was there. I think it was 12 inches. That's a huge change in about three minutes. Can I imagine? count that as a reality shift. Can you imagine that? You know, for those of you, you athletes, right, out there, gaining 12 inches in a jump. Liz had uh, had done this. This this young man was um, a, a professional, you know, candidate. So this is something that um, that was of tremendous value to him. And that 12 inches, by the way, that 12 inches was so extreme that at one time that he that he could no longer dunk because imagine the you know that. 12 to 18 inches somebody else said 18 on that one but that it you know you can imagine where are my hands relative to the net if i'm 12 inches higher so anyway liz had to reprogram his dunk you know that's amazing amazing stuff yeah we had another athlete um that we changed their ranking they were a B ranking. They wanted to be a master ranking. That would have been three uh, levels ahead of them. And in their uh, career, it was an amateur, uh, you know, semi-pro. They wouldn't have shift a rank more than one ranking in a lifetime for most of them. And we shifted that ranking in three months. We changed reality. We changed the rules <laughs> of the universe. And, you know, Bill and I started out the show today talking about changing the rules in a corporation, a media uh, event that we wanted and we needed to be in a different time. This changed the rules of what becomes possible in terms of the career of an athlete. And, you know, I think we've seen this more and more and more um, in this 21st century where what seemed impossible is now possible in all areas of life. But being able to have the tools to do it and know how to do it for yourself that's the part that you and I figured out, Bill, that right. we, we know if we can change at the neurological level, what our body perceives through our senses and how that signal gets formed to send to our brain creates the perception. We can change the way the body receives that information and sends that signal. We can change reality. It's pretty incredible. It really is. And you know, um, it's kind of the missing piece of the puzzle for the mystics. The mystics knew if you can permanently alter your perspective and maintain it, that reality will bend to it. Well, what we have, this missing component of that, is that enable you to make that permanent shift through your neurological system, which is where you get your automatic reaction. Yeah. The actions are done through the nervous system. It's also called the subconscious. But that once you have that and it's automatic, then that's how you're going to see the world. Yeah, it's all about that sensation and senses. It's how we create reality. If you have been listening to Law of Attraction for, you know what, since about the 80s and mid 80s, late late 80s, that you would have heard that you create your own reality. And most people would say, I would never create this crap that I'm in the middle of. Mm -hmm. Except unfortunately that you do. Not intentionally, though. What Bill said is automatic. It is automatic. We learn from the time we're in the womb, from what we hear, what we taste, you know, what our mother experiences. Our nervous system collects all that data and it just informs the next thing and the next thing and the next thing we do in an automated way just to keep us safe and alive. That's all. And then we believe those automations are our beliefs. <laughs> We think there are belief systems when they're really not. They're kind of those built-in codes that we got 
from maybe our family, from maybe church, from maybe school, from maybe an odd comment that somebody made one point in our life. It informs that body about how to feel and what signal to send to the brain. So all we did is figured out how to collapse those, how to delete the things that were automatic that held us with the blinders on. We also figured out how to completely open up your visual reference, which we didn't realize, but at the time when we can open what your eyes can actually see, you now can see things that you didn't know were even there on the planet. They were there the whole time. You couldn't see it. So for you, it didn't exist. But for everybody else, it did. That's an incredible thing. You had one of those experiences where after a session, all of a sudden you could see, uh, a, what was it, a convenience store where you believed there was a car dealership? I I had lived, you know, 30 plus years. You know, the, the freeway entrance that I would get on for 30 years uh, across, there's a, on the corner was a uh, Mossy Nissan. Mossy Nissan is a, you know, Nissan, a, a brand, you know, the particular one was called Mossy. And, and I would have bet a million dollars. If I had $20 million, I would have bet all $20 million. It's a Mossy Nissan on that corner. I pass by it every day. And then after a session, all of a sudden I'm, I'm sitting there at the stoplight and I'm there with my wife and I, I look over and I, uh, there's a 7-Eleven gas station on the corner and next to it is the Mossy Nissan. But on the corner is the 7-Eleven um, gas station and it looks old. And I look over and I say, how long has that been there? And she goes, uh, all our lives. And it looks it too. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't even believe I could never actually see it. I literally couldn't see it. And I've had those now um, uh, all over the place, all over the place, complete buildings, uh, signs, everything. Your your system shuts down the data that's coming in and when you when you expand your uh your brain and your and that corresponds with the vision um those are one system by the way the brain and the eyes and the spinal cord are, are one and they one affects the other it, it's incredible so we'll wrap it up here for this session and we will talk a lot more about this in the future, but I'll end it on this little teaser. You know, Bill experienced uh, not being able to see something that, that he believed was clearly there and it's here for him now, but who's to say he didn't enter a new reality or a brand new timeline or dimension, which I think is totally possible too. And we'll talk about another time. All right, everybody. Thanks, Bill McKenna, for sharing your stories with us today. Thank you, Liz. That was just fun. That's fun. It's a fun topic. And you guys, it couldn't be more real and you can do it. So reach out to us at info at cognomovement.com. We'd love to hear your bending time stories. We'd love to hear your reality shifting stories. And of course, you can always ask us a question. We do answer, surprisingly. And you can find us at cognomovement.com if you want to know more about the programs that we offer. We will see everybody again next week. Until then, be safe and be well. Thanks for being here with us on the New Life Perspective radio show. For more information or to find out more about the work that Bill and I do, please visit us at cognomovement.com or email us at info at cognomovement.com. See you again soon.